welcome back, Chargeheads. So, uh, unfortunately, in the last episode, after some very good work with the CAD modelling, Ralph dropped the bombshell of the fact that we can't get the Tesla Model 3 motor to work without having to shell out £18,000. So, in this episode, we go through Plan B. What are the other options available to get the wedgie moving? Right, so motors. I mean, I've got a little bit of an idea of what motors are on the market, but it's fairly limited, isn't it? Once you start uh, putting in all, all the different constraints we've got, that, that brings the number of choices down quite a lot. There's some really nice ones, uh, Cascadia Motion in uh, America, which is an offshoot of Ball Warner. Oh. They make a lovely little integrated unit. It's got an inverter built in. Yeah. Um, and that would just about fit at the front there. Right. Bit on the pricey side. What sort of money are we talking? About, for the motor itself, about £12,000. Okay, so it was, yeah, more expensive than the Tesla Model 3. But it's a really nice piece of kit. Right. Uh, there's a company up near Hull uh, called Vance Electric Machines, and they are doing some really interesting stuff with uh, using uh, recycled materials and recyclable motors. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Compressed aluminium uh, cabling in it. Right. So they've got a design that has no rare earth magnets. Okay. It's an induction motor, no copper in it. Uh, and you just throw it into a recycling machine, a fragmenter, and it, it goes through. And it's got very impressive in performance out of it as well. About £9,000, something like that. Does that include the inverter? No, you have to buy the, no, you'll have to buy the inverter as well. So it's just for the motor on its own. Right. Nice piece of kit, though. Okay. Um, and what sort of power is, is that? It's about where you want to be. It's the sort of uh, 200 kilowatt range. Z Zero EV, you've got... Uh, one as well that they I think they've only just uh, recently put on the market is it the Zonic motor yeah the Zonic um, um, currently rated at 180 kilowatts which is a little bit below where you wanted to be right but again brand new motor decent price uh, and they're available a lot of the motors you'll find at the moment if you order it you'll be waiting three or four months before it arrives yeah the whole supply chain systems are really struggling is there any way that we could change the uh, top end and increase the acceleration by doing something with the gearing? Right, so if we change the gearing, so we put a little gearbox on the back of it, we can change it so you have a lower top speed but higher acceleration. Okay. So that's what we're swapping one for the other. I'm gonna try and keep it a bit like the, uh, the Japanese agreement, you know, 116 miles an hour. Um, I don't think it really needs to go much faster than that on track. Uh, uh Okay, well if you want to gear it down to that, that gives us a few options. We could go possibly to a, a two to one reduction gearbox. But yeah. all these motors, they're brand new, aren't they? They're all absolutely brand new, so they'll last for a good long time. Right, because the whole idea of having the Tesla Model 3 motor is it's used, it's being repurposed, it's greener. There must be another motor that we can find that can encompass all these things. Power, used, being green, being reliable, there must be. Well, the thing you've got is that there are no standard production vehicles that run this sort of arrangement that you want to do. Most of them are front wheel drive or rear transaxle units. So they've got a motor with a gear casing and a differential all built in. Right. Now, with a reduction ratio of about four or five to one, something like that. So their gearboxes have got the wrong ratio for what you want. Their gearboxes are too big to fit in that hole uh, and they've got a differential in which you don't need. Right. So you'd have to reinvent that whole end of the motor system to make it work. I think that I'm going to have to completely rethink the uh, power. Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit lost, if I'm honest, Ralph. I'm, I'm not sure what to do. Well, there are some other options. If you like the content, please like and subscribe because it really helps the channel. Um, so, yeah, hit that button, bell notification. I'm sure you'll enjoy the content if you like what you've seen so far. Now... I dare say you're not going to be putting a massive mileage onto this vehicle. But I mean, I'd like to do at least a couple of thousand miles a year in it. So having a motor that lasts a million miles isn't really your crucial mm. thing. It depends, you know, I might, I might go for a, a tour, you know, want to see if I can get to the uh, end of the earth. All I'm saying is that with any standard motor, you can run it inefficiently at higher power levels. 
So okay. with any motor, you can potentially run it at three times its rated power level for a short amount of time whilst it's overheating and being really inefficient. You right. turn half of your electricity into heat doing that, but you can actually, if you just want it for a quick burst of acceleration, we can design a system that will allow it to go there, measure the temperatures really carefully, and before it starts getting too hot, back off the power automatically right. so you can't overheat the motor. It will shorten the lifespan of the motor because all the coils are being pulled really, really hard. All the rest of it's being stressed much more than it would be. But it means that you could potentially use an existing motor that's a lower power rating, right? and then we could run it at a higher power level. It's not a great way of doing it, is but that, it would work. Is that a bit like tuning an engine? Yes, we can tune up motors, yes. A bit like a remap. We you know, can remap electric. Extra boost. Yes, we can. Like bleed valve motorsport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I must admit, I've popped a few engines doing that before in my time. And that's the downside. Yeah. You ever stress anything, you're going to break something. Right. But if we do it sensibly, and you drive sensibly... Oh, I always drive sensibly. Then <laughs> it's an option. And that will give you a cheaper motor option. I need, to, I need to go away and think about this, Ralph, because, you know, it has... It has really, really changed my uh, build, the build, you know, the charge heads build. I don't want to let anyone down. You know, I've, I've said that I wanted to do the Tesla motor because I thought that was the best one just to get, you know, people interested in the build and also from the power point of view. Because yeah. uh, I want it to be, you know, like I said, equivalent to the to the Griffith. I think I've got some, uh, I've got some pondering to do. Yeah, have mate. Yeah. yeah, have mate. Well, I'm glad that I was able to give you all this good news. Yeah, you, you cheered you up. You, you always tend to uh, bring the sunshine out, Ralph. So, <laughs> thank you very much. All part um, of the service. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe I need to think about even a different car. Well, I don't know. It's one of those things. If I was you, I wouldn't start from here. No. All right. Well, thanks for your help, Ralph, and uh, hopefully. Uh, yeah, hopefully we can uh, find a solution. I'm right. sure we can. Okay. Yeah, cheers. Uh, Break down when we're apart. Too far. I'm in the dark. I don't fall. My foolish heart. And don't wait for magic sparks. Make it. Work all the we get stuck on the low. Breathe out, we can't forget. Hurts like 